It's a typical day at Bedford School, quiet with just the faint murmur of schoolboys in their lessons. But 40 years ago, the scene was very different. On the night of 2nd of March 1979, the Great Hall here was ablaze after an arsonist had set it alight. Sub-officer Patrick Wheeler was one of the first firefighters on the scene. Um, a great deal of noise, a great deal of uh, flames and smoke uh, and confusion. Now visiting the school for a series of commemorative events at Bedford School to mark 40 years since the fire, Mr Wheeler spoke with staff and schoolboys about that night. It happens very quickly. The, the prime concern initially is to see whether or not anybody's in the building. Uh, and once we had established that nobody was in the building, we then made a decision on how to fight the fire or how to try to contain the fire until reserves came. So the first thing I did was to issue the order to get the water organised and then I went and con communicated with control and asked for further appliances to attend, specialist appliances i.e. aerial ladders and hydraulic platforms because we needed to fight the fire very obviously from above as well as from the ground. Famously, the then headmaster, Ian Kim Jones, ran back into the burning building to retrieve school records from his office so that education records and waiting lists remained intact, as Bedford schoolboy Jack O'Donovan explains. The story goes that when he arrived here, he was most concerned not with the, uh, the relics of the school or the history, but more so the three filing cabinets which held the records of every boy in the school and all of the future boys and he ran in there with a few senior staff into his office which is on the side of the main school and uh, grabbed the cabinets which had um, all of these information and he uh, yeah he was a bit of a hero on the night as well as in the future as he helped to uh, rebuild the school and he's gone down as a legend in the school's history. The fire itself went well into the following day but Mr Jones didn't let that get in the way of education ordering business as usual at the school, with lessons taking place that Monday, which Bedford schoolboy Oliver Burridge-Dean says has set an ethos for the school ever since. The fact that they were in lessons by period two the next day after the fire sort of shows what uh, type of the school we're at. And when we have a snow day, perhaps, we don't, we don't call the day off. Because calling the day off because of snow when we've came to school the next day after the main school building has burnt down, where the majority of the classrooms are, it, it would be ridiculous. So yeah, definitely gives us the sort of get up and go sort of ethos in the school. It took 18 fire crews 10 hours to bring the blaze under control. On the night, now famous images of the fire were also captured by Christopher Brown, whose grandson Jack is a current pupil at the school. When he was walking his dog on, the, on that night, he uh, down the Paris Avenue, he stumbled across the fire and he quickly ran home back to his house and he got his, uh, his camera, which luckily was loaded with colour film, which was quite a rarity at the time, but he had the aperture set up so that just by chance he was able to take a picture of the fire and he wasn't really a, an expert on taking photographs, so it was just a, a lucky shot that he managed to get such the, um, the amazing photograph you see today. Now Jack and Oliver have been helping collate records and eyewitness testimonies about the fire as part of a Bedford School archive project to record the legacy of the fire which is very much a part of Bedford Town's history that many say also gave the school a chance to modernise. Granted it was a cataclysmic event but from talking to all the old boys they were saying quite a lot of them believe that it was a, a rebirth of the school. It was almost like a phoenix rising from the ashes of the, the new facilities and the new classrooms and it could bring our, our school into the century when it had perhaps been uh, lacking or uh, perhaps old fashioned in its ways. As Jack said, the fact that it had to be rebuilt and redesigned meant we could have more classrooms, um, and really it was probably a, definitely a benefit for the school, as Jack said. And for the community as a whole, because of course the Great Hall is also used as part of uh, the Bedford community and lots of people have different fairs here and events which they organise through the school, but you can have, there's lots of public events that go on here and it's, uh, it's a nice like venue for the town. The arsonist who set the fire was later jailed for his actions, but 40 years on, Bedford doesn't reflect on the school they lost but more on the school they rebuilt. Paul Hutchinson, Bedford Independent, Bedford School.